What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my DraftKings MMA picks for UFC Vegas 65. We have Derek Lewis going against Sergey Spivak. And we're back for another DraftKings Picks video this week, breaking down UFC Vegas 65. And I'll be honest, not my favorite card in the world, um, especially from a betting perspective. Not going to have a ton of bets on this card, but from a DraftKings perspective, I actually really like this card. So we're back on the small cage. We got 12 fights to work with. So I think it's going to be a very fun card, um, like I said, especially from a DraftKings perspective. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, before we get started and get into everything, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Check me out on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. And if you do want extra content, the content you do not see on YouTube, optimizer targets, rankings, projections, ownership projections, all that good stuff and more, check out DFS by the numbers.com. All right. I say we get into it, and as always, we're going to start with our fight doesn't go to decision lines. Up top, we have Lewis Spivak, minus 600. Fight doesn't go to decision. On FanDuel Sportsbook right now, it is sitting at minus 1,000, which it tells you something. I mean, this fight is going to end inside the distance uh, way more often than not, and I see it playing out one of two ways. The first way is Sergey Spivak who is 9,200, goes out there and just ragdolls Lewis um, until there's a finish, until Lewis goes out there and quits. Uh, Spivak, really active at the ground and pound, very good wrestling, and he has the opportunity here at 9,200 to put up a crazy score, an absolute crazy score. So for that reason, I love Sergey Spivak, but Derek Lewis at 7,000, this guy is a guy that you could never count out, ever, um, especially at 7,000, because the guy has so much power. Spivak has been knocked out twice. So I could see Spivak going out there, just ragdolling Lewis, eventually finding the finish, putting up a massive score. Or the other way I see it playing out is Derek Lewis landing that big shot. I think both outcomes are on the table. One guy is 9,200 in Spivak. I like him a lot. But Derek Lewis at 7,000 just can't be ignored. Um, a fight that I'm going to literally be 100% 100 expo exposed to, um, like a 60-40 uh, split in favor of Spivak here. Next, we have Jack Della Maddalena going against Danny Roberts. Yeah, not going to have a ton of Danny Roberts, uh, but I do like Jack a lot. He's one of my favorite plays, if not my favorite play, on the entire slate. Um, you know, Jack Della Maddalena, 9,600, so the most expensive, but, you know, that should be a given considering he's the, the, the biggest favorite on the card by a mile. He's, like, minus 550. Like, the next biggest favorite is, I think, like, Sergey Spivak, um, at like, minus 200. So there's not a ton of big favorites on the card, but Jack Della Maddalena is, is definitely one. I think he knocks out Danny Roberts. Roberts now 35 years old. He's taken a ton of damage. He's been knocked out several times. The Trinado fight was a horrible look for Roberts as well, getting wobbled by everything that Trinado landed. I think Maddalena's uh, at this point especially much better than uh, Francisco Trinaldo. Um, he's much younger, hits much harder, and I think Maddalena puts him out. And uh, I think Maddalena's the real deal. I think I can't wait to see him you know, take a step up in competition. Um... But yeah, I think the UFC is trying to get him another highlight real knockout win here. So give me Madalena in this one. Not going to have a ton of Roberts. Next, we have uh, Kennedy and Zatruku going against Ayn Kudalaba. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind both sides here. Uh, with Kudalaba, you have that first round upside, which I love. You have the takedown upside, which I love. Um, he has, I think, 10 wins. Or actually, it's 13. 13 wins come in the first round for Kudalaba. So for that reason, at 7,400, you have to take a serious look at the guy. On the flip side, Kennedy, if he's able to survive that early storm that Ayan Kudalaba brings, he's probably going to take over and potentially get a late finish. So I think both sides are in play. I personally do like Kudalaba more. You're getting a big savings here. Um, and he has that first one upside, and he has that take then upside, whereas Kennedy, I think if he wins, he's probably going to get beat up for the first round, round and a half, and then he does like a comeback win like he does. So I'm not extremely high on Kennedy this week, but he's definitely in play for that late finish. All right, next we have Sherman Acosta, minus 200 fight, doesn't go to decision. This is one that I actually feel like could go to decision, one of those sloppy heavyweight fights. I mean, this price tag is kind of ridiculous. Acosta, 9,100. Sherman, 7,100. I feel like this is a coin flip. I mean, I just I don't understand this. Acosta just fought like two and a half weeks ago. Um, took a lot of damage in that fight from Jared Van Der with the late kicks and Sherman has a ton of leg kicks in his own right. I mean, this is a 50-50 fight to me. I don't see why the prices are where they're at. So I'm not going to get to a ton of cost. I'm still going to get to some of them just because it is a heavyweight fight. And Sherman has been knocked out plenty of times. But um, I will definitely get to some Sherman 7,100 because I feel like this could really go either way, especially with the cost of coming in on short notice, having just fought a couple weeks ago. And Sherman coming into this fight with a, a full camp. Sherman was supposed to fight 
I think it was last week or the week before against, I think it was Josh Parisian. So he should be good to go. But uh, yeah, the line just does not make too much sense to me. And like I said, this is one that I feel like could go to like an ugly, greasy decision. All right, getting into our core plays, we talked about him. Jack Della Metalena, 9,600, biggest favorite on the card by a mile. This guy is going to be very high on this week, and rightfully so. Uh, there's not a, a favorite on this car that is anywhere near minus 550 like Jack is. I think it's a great matchup for him. You know, Danny Roberts is a guy that just kind of declining. I, I see a decline. I see a decline in the durability. The guy's been knocked out a ton. He's been hurt a ton. He's wobbling all over the place in a lot of his fights. Um, I think Jack puts him out here. So I love me some Jack Della Metalena, 9,600. Uh, Ricky Tercios. This is a weird one. This is one that a lot of people are probably going to disagree with because of his last performance. Um, I think there's some reasons he biased on this fight because I, I go back and watch every other fight with Ricky Tercios and he's never looked that bad before. I think it might have just been a one-off. Um, and this is a fighter where you can't ignore the upside. I mean, even in his last fight against Eamon Zahabi, he did not score anything. But he still like attempted almost like 250 strikes. Um, he didn't land much, but I think he's going to have a much better fight here. Um, the guy is just so active. He's doing something at all times. And that volume, especially if he is landing in this fight, which I think he could, is going to definitely add up. Uh, so I like Ricky Tercios. I think he's going to actually be pretty low-owned. He was a very popular play last time out against Ahmed Zahabi, and he burned a lot of people, including me. But I'm going right back to the well. I love the upside with Ricky Tercios, and I love the fact that probably nobody's going to play him this week. Um, Brady Heastan, 8,500, probably one of the more um, upside players on the entire card. Um, probably one of the highest exposed in terms of ownership as well, because this guy is a guy that... I think he can honestly get like 10 takedowns here. Um, going against Fernie Garcia, who Garcia's takedown defense is not good, but his get-up game is very good, which I only think is going to lead to takedowns. I like the cardio of Brady. I like the game plan of Brady. He's going to go out there and probably shoot a takedown within the first 15 seconds. Um, and I like that. It's going to add up. He's only 8,500. So I, I like Brady a lot. One of my favorite plays on the slate. I'm going to have a decent amount of him. And then Sergey Spivak, 9,200. I mean, you can't be confident against Derek Lewis ever, but yeah, 9,200, if he wins this fight, Sergey Spivak, expect takedowns, expect a ton of ground and pound, expect a knockout TKO submission. Um, like I said, you can't count out Derek Lewis, that's why I'm going to have a fair share, but I do lean the Spivak side, and like I said earlier, I'm going to have like a 60-40 split, I think somebody's getting finished, and I think somebody's getting finished probably within the first round and a half, two rounds. All right, moving on to our GBP place here, uh, Muslim Salikov, 8,300. Yeah, this is a fight that we, we didn't talk about on the fight doesn't go to decision lines because um, it just missed the cut, but I think it's like minus 175. Fight doesn't go to decision, and I think it's a good fight to target, and I think it's a good fight that does end inside the distance here. Uh, Andre Fialo hits like an absolute truck, but defensively, Andre Fialo is, is not good. Um, he's absorbing 6.65 significant strikes per minute, only landing 3.78, which is a negative significant strike differential of 2.87 which is the worst on the card by by a mile. Honestly, it's probably one of the worst I've ever seen uh, for Andre Fiala. Wait, only a 48% striking defense for him. So he can give it, um, but I don't know if he can take it. And he eats shots with his face, um, which is an interesting strategy against the guy in Muslim Salikov that does hit very, very hard. So um, I think somebody's getting knocked out here. I do slightly lean Salikov as far as a pick goes, but we'll talk about the salary in a little bit for Fiala, 7,900. You're getting ice savings there, and I believe the line is kind of flipped there. I think uh, it's either a pick em or, or slight favored Fialo at this point. But yeah, Muslim Salikov definitely in play here. Vanessa Demopoulos, 8,000. I think she has all the upside in this fight. Really, it comes down to the takedowns. Is she going to be able to, to land a takedown against Maria Oliveira? If so, I think she's very live for the submission. If not, I still think she can hang in there. I, I like her forward pressure. I like her toughness. I like her grittiness. And uh, I think she could give Oliveira some problems. But yeah, if she is able to get this fight down to the match, she's very live for a submission. I think she has a lot of upside. And for that reason, I'll be playing some Vanessa Demopoulos. It's kind of hard to trust her, though. And I don't want to go crazy on it because she only has like a 7% takedown accuracy. But it probably only takes one takedown. She's very dangerous on the mat, and Oliveira has been submitted twice. Uh, Kennedy and Zachuko, 8,800. Talked about it earlier. Just got to weather that early storm. Weather those first five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half minutes of Iron Kudalaba. And once he does that, you know, he's, he's uh, the, the Homer Simpson of the light heavyweight division. He, he takes damage, and he, he comes back, and he waits for his opponents to, to tire out just from beating this guy up. And I think he's live for a late finish. He throws a lot of volume as well, which I like. So, yeah, don't mind some Kennedy for that late finish upside. 
And then Miles Johns, 8,400. Just really like the matchup here for him. Not my favorite play in the world, but I think he has wrestling upside if he wants it. Vince Morales, only like a 46% takedown defense. Miles Johns has a nice wrestling background. So we can go the takedown route. And I think he can also go the leg kick route. Uh, that is something Morales has clearly struggled with throughout his career. It's something he has not fixed, and I, I doubt he fixed it for this fight. And Miles Johns does have some good leg kicks. Miles Johns is coming in here on short notice, which uh, could be a, a negative. It could be a positive because Vince Morales probably... Uh, who's who's Vince Morales supposed to face? Um, some contender series guy. I think it was Jose Johnson. But yeah, Vince Morales was uh, did not have a full camp to prepare for Miles Johns. You know what I mean? So give me Johns here, 8400. I think he has multiple paths to score decent here. And then live dogs here, Iron Kudalaba, 7400. Just a ton of upside. Uh, just take down upside. He's completing takedowns at like ridiculous rate. The guy's going out there completing takedowns at 63%, which is phenomenal. Um, 13 wins in the first round. I mean, he's going to go out there and, and beat the crap out of Kennedy. It's just whether does Kennedy survive the first round or does he not? You know, we've seen Kennedy get in the, knocked out in the first round before against Da Eun Jung. This is going to be one of the you know most dangerous opponents Kennedy's faced outside of like a Paul Craig. So I could see uh, Kudalaba finishing Kennedy in the first round. But yeah, if not, um, he's probably going to slow down. He's probably going to gas out and he's probably going to get finished late in that third round. Andre Fialo, 7,900. Like we talked about, his defense is not good, but offensively, the guy has a ton of power. Salikov is 38 years old. Salikov just got knocked out in his last fight. Fialo is a really good play at 7,900. Uh, Teresa Bleda, 7,300. Um, yeah, I don't mind this one. and I don't think she's going to be like crazy popular, but yeah, only 7,300. Her path to victory is, is takedowns and wrestling. She's not going to go out there and stand with Silva at all. And when she gets on top, she's very heavy. Um, her opponents typically do not get up, and Silva did show good takedown defense in her last fight against Jasmine Jazz the Vicious, but if Blade is able to get one takedown here, I think she wins the round. So yeah, I don't mind some Blade at 7,300. Um, not a ton of options down low that I like this week, but she is one that kind of sticks out for that wrestling upside. If she wins, expect a lot of wrestling, and that's going to equal DraftKings points. And then Chase Sherman, 7,100. Um, I just think that the line should be, or the salaries in this case, should be much, I think this should be an 8,200, 8,000 matchup. Um, it just doesn't make much sense. I mean, it's a heavyweight fight, very low-level heavyweight fight. I don't think Shea Sherman's good, but I don't think Waldo's good at all. Um, and then on top of that, Waldo's coming in on short notice, having just fought, having taken some damage. Um, I think like Sherman's very loud to win this fight. So give me Sherman 7,100. I don't mind him at that price tag. And then pump plays. How about the ultimate pump play in one Derek Lewis? I mean, the guy has a ton of power. He can knock out anybody in the division. Um, he's knocked out much better guys than than Sergey Spivak. And um, we are in the apex. Uh, Derek Lewis is undefeated in the apex, and we have seen Spivak knocked out multiple times in the first round. So yeah, Derek Lewis, don't count this guy out. He's extremely live. He's live against anybody. I mean, I I stopped betting against Derek Lewis a long time ago. I mean, it was the last straw for me was the Curtis Blades fight. I thought Curtis Blades was going to win that fight easy. I thought it was not even going to be close, and uh, that was not the case. Uh, he knocked out Curtis Blades brutally, and uh, that could happen here. I think it's a great matchup for Spivak, but you know sometimes it just does not matter with Derek Lewis. So Derek Lewis, the ultimate pump play, got to have a decent amount of them. And then Faith Marina Moreau's at nine thousand. It's actually dogger pass for me. I mean Jennifer Maya. If Jennifer Maya was to grapple at seventy two hundred, um, she. She'd look like a steal here. The problem with Jennifer Maya is she does not wrestle. But if she comes in here and does it, then she does it. And she probably wins the fight easily. But yeah, Moreau's, I'm going to pick her to win the fight. But 9,000, there's just so many better options out there around this range. Um, you know, decent volume. Maybe she gets a takedown or two. But the fight to go to decisions like minus 300, minus 350 on some books. So I think I'm content on passing on Moreau's this week. Just much better options up in that area in the 9Ks. Um, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, should be a fun card for DraftKings. Really liking the card from DraftKings. Um, I'll probably have more invested on DraftKings this week than than betting. Um, just because a lot of these matchups are close. A lot of these matchups can go either way. But I think it's going to be a good one. Um, I think we're going to get some finishes. We're back in the small cage and definitely looking forward to it. Um, if you guys can please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. It is always much, much appreciated. Check out DFSbythenumbers.com. I was able to get my DraftKings article up, the optimizers all updated, ready to go, projections updated, ownership, projection, ownership projections are updated. Um, yeah, pretty much everything's out already on a Wednesday. I love when DraftKings get the salaries out early. I'm able to get stuff done early, and that was the case this week. So best of luck. 
UFC Vegas 65, and we'll talk to you guys very soon. See you.